Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive channel. In this video, we're gonna install the pistons back into the block. Okay, with the crankshaft in, we want to check for end play now. And we'll do it just by <coughs> grabbing onto each side of the uh, crank here and then pushing back and forth like this. And we'll measure the end play. We're looking around for around four to 5,000 of end play. I got it zeroed out here, so I'll rock this thing back and forth here. And it looks like we're right at about four thousandths of end play. Now we can go ahead and start assembling the uh, pistons and connecting rods. Um, again, make sure everything spins nice and freely and make sure that you have all debris and lint and everything off uh, these journals here. Any debris in there is gonna cause problems down the road. So get a lint-free cloth and wipe it down. Make sure it's got that mirror-like finish and absolutely nothing on it. Let's go ahead and prep our pistons here. Make sure everything is correct. Again, remember on these uh, two top compression rings here, we wanna make sure that the end gap here is 180 degree offset. And um, we're also gonna put some assembly lube on these rings here. Make sure again, everything's free of debris. We're gonna put some new bearings in the connecting rod. And I will check the measurement or the thickness of the old ones versus the new ones. Um, if there's any kind of difference, we're gonna to have to look a lot closer at the uh, bearing clearances. If they're the same, I'm not gonna worry about it. And I'm just gonna put in the new bearings. Now again, the only reason I'm gonna measure <clears throat> the bearings and if they're the same, put them in is remember, I'm using the exact same crankshaft. I'm using the same connecting rods. Everything's the same. And we observe no damage on these bearings here. So as long as the new ones are the same thickness as this one, I think we're pretty safe. Okay, the bearings I'm using, these are standard sized bearings. And uh, again, they're from uh, DNJ. So I'll get these out and then uh, we'll measure them. Okay, so let's get the old bearing out of here. And uh, these uh, connecting rod bolts will need to be replaced. They are torqued yield. Also notice that uh, these are cracked connecting rod ends here. Now notice that these are cracked and they can only be, go back the same way that they were cracked. They do that on purpose um, so they fit together better. They fit together more tightly and they won't shift around. If it was a straight cut, uh, they wouldn't be as strong. So it's kind of odd to see that. It looks like it's broken, but actually it's designed that way so again it's very important that you have it oriented right you do not want to swap it around so anyway let's go ahead and take a bearing out here and uh we'll compare it measure it uh, with the uh with the new ones okay looks like uh we're measuring there right at uh point zero let's see zero point zero seven eight so these new ones better be the same. And there we are, exactly the same. So I'm not gonna bother uh, trying to determine the uh, bearing clearances since they're the same and these older ones had no damage, we're good. And we're using the same crank. Okay, so there's the old bearings. And uh, before putting the new ones in, again, make sure that there's absolutely nothing in here. You want that to be perfectly clean. Any any kind of debris in there is going to make that bearing clearance smaller. So, here we are. And uh, the way to do it is you got the little tang there. I like to put the tang in there first, kind of hold it in place, and then just push the other end in, like so. And then we'll do the same thing with the cap. Again, uh, clean it all up. And get a new bearing that little tang in there and kind of hold it in place and then just push it down. There we go. Now I'm gonna to have to remove these bolts and uh, get the new ones. Okay, here are the new connecting rod bolts. And in case you're interested, there's the part number. And uh, fortunately they still manufacture these so I didn't have to go aftermarket to, to get them. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull these ones out and install the new ones. Okay, uh, just for your info, I did take the bearing back out because I don't want to damage it. And the best way to get these out is just kind of push down and then uh, turn these out. And the reason you have to do that is there's a little sleeve that's on the end of these. Now they should just, uh, they should pull out pretty easy. There we are. Yeah, there's a little sleeve here. And let's see, I'll show you on uh, one of the newer ones. 
you can see that this little sleeve here kind of holds the bolt in so it doesn't come out but that's a friction fit there so you're gonna have to kind of tap this one in there we go got that out so here's the new one and let's see let me get something to tap it with okay and just kind of tap it in and then once it's tapped in you'll see that it uh, doesn't fall out it just kind of stays in there okay there we go now we'll go ahead and reinstall the bearing And then uh, the bolts that you take out, uh, go ahead and discard these. Again, they're torque field. They can only be used one time. And how can uh, lube up the piston? I'm going to use some, uh, again, the Ultra Slick assembly lube on here. And uh, again, make sure that your compression rings are clocked 180 degrees uh, from end to end. Okay, like so. And then uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of assembly lube around the edges here and uh, then just kind of work it in all the way around and uh, you'll know when you got it in there real well because these uh, rings will not shift easily there's a fair amount of resistance there and uh, just make sure that it's really well lubricated all the way around and then also the same thing with the bearings here so again, make sure that you got the assembly lube on all surfaces of the bearing and not just on the connecting rod half, but also on the uh, cap as well. Okay, now we'll go over to the motor and uh, we'll use a piston ring compressor, compress the rings and then uh, tap the piston in. All right, and this is the piston ring compressor I'm gonna use. And before we do, uh, insert the piston, uh, make sure that uh, you have adequate oil all around on the uh, cylinder walls in here. Okay, so let's start by setting the uh, piston in here. Again, remember the notch goes to the front of the motor and we're starting with piston number one, which is the most forward cylinder in the block. So let's go ahead and set this down here. Do it gently. We wanna make sure that we don't um, score the sides of the cylinder walls. And also, um, I guess I should show you this first. Before you even do that, um, turn the crank so that the um, that journal is in the downward position. Let's see here, I'll turn this and then until it's in the downward. That way when we tap it down, it's not gonna hit uh, that journal and damage it. So let's go ahead and set this back in here like so. Okay. And now we'll get the uh, ring compressor, set it down here, and just crank this thing until it starts compressing the rings. Like so. And now we can just go ahead and tap it down. Like so. And there you go. Okay, now with the piston in there, we can kind of turn the crank gently and make sure that it just kind of falls right in into the bearing there. And then once it's in, I can kind of push on the piston and turn the thing at the same time until we get up here. And now we can go ahead and install the cap. Just like so. Okay, before installing the cap, I like to hit this with a little bit more oil first. Okay. And then again, remember, it doesn't matter how this is oriented. And it needs to go back the same way that it came off. Now we're going to torque these bolts down to spec. These are factory bolts, so we're going to use factory specs. 
And here they are, they're gonna be uh, tightened in three different stages. Um, first, we're gonna tighten to 18 pound feet, then 33 pound feet, and then an additional 90 degrees. Here's 18 pound feet. Now 33 pound feet. Okay, now we're just gonna do an additional 90 degrees. Now, before torquing these 90 degrees, I'm just gonna put a little mark here so it's facing the front of the motor. And then when I have 90 degrees, they'll be pointing to the side of the motor. So I got it clocked here so it's exactly 90 degrees crossing the motor. When I have it torqued 90, it'll be in line with the motor. Okay, let's go. Right there. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing seven more times. Then of course, once you have it torqued down, uh, make sure that it still spins freely and I can turn this very easily. So, well, let's go on to the next one. Now, just to satisfy curiosity and also help you if you get one of the new bolts uh, mixed up with one of the old bolts and you wanna know, um, all you need to do, since these are torqued to yield, uh, is measure the diameter. Since the ones that have been used have already been stretched, this should be thinner than the new one. So let's look at the old one here and look at the diameter. Okay, we're looking at about uh, 326 thousandths. So this one should be a little bit more. And yep, we're at about 328 thousandths. So, this is going to be the new bolt. It's a little thicker and hasn't been stretched yet. I just checked with Machine Shop, and it looks like the head gaskets are about a week out. So, in the meantime, I'm going to take these heads, put them back on the block with the old head gaskets, loosely tighten it down, and then do a leak down test to make sure that the rings are sealing well, and as well as the valves. Okay, these are the old head gaskets. Um, I'm definitely not going to be reusing these. They're also too thin now with the amount of material shaved off. But they should be good enough to uh, bolt the head down to create a decent enough seal to do a leak down test. Now, again, we don't really have to worry about how the crank is clocked because we do not have the cam fouler in. Okay, let's go ahead and calibrate our leak down tester. And basically we just want to turn this until this goes to zero. And if we had a perfect seal, if we had no leak at all, it would stay at zero. Of course, we're gonna plug it in and some will leak around the piston rings and the valves. And then uh, the remaining is what our leak down is, the percent leak down. So let's go ahead and hook her up now and see what we get. Here's cylinder number one. Okay, there's our leak down, and it looks very good. Looks like uh, only about uh, 10%. And uh, we'll just go ahead and repeat this process on all of the uh, cylinders, and hopefully we have some more results. Okay, I just tested all these cylinders. They're all right there at 9, 10%. Um, very little variation. And uh, so now we just need to wait for the new head gaskets to come in and then we can put the uh, timing stuff on then put the rocket rollers back in and then uh, start finishing the rest of the assembly. So anyway, since it's going to be a little while before um, I get those new head gaskets, I think I'll just call this quits at this point and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye bye.